We've got uh, some basketball recruiting news to talk about. Lots going on. Is Xavier Booker on his official visit? Alec? Yeah, so he, he finally got on campus for an official uh, this week. He, he was already on campus back in June, just like about every other prospect, uh, at least in the Midwest, for an unofficial visit. Um, but it was good to get him back on campus for an official. He'd been to Purdue already, um, visited Kansas State, visited a, a few other schools, but um, finally to get, get him on campus for an official visit, which they had been trying to schedule for, I would say, probably the last two months and just weren't able to kind of set on a date till now. Uh, good to get him up there. Uh, it's ending up this afternoon, so we'll, we'll kind of get a little bit more insight over the weekend and into next week about exactly how the visit went. But um, everything that I've heard so far, uh, obviously very, very good. Um, just about as good as every other that has gone up to this point. And I don't think you kind of expect anything less from Mike Woodson and his staff up to this point. Um, any prospect that gets on campus seems to have a great time and seems to connect really well with the coaches. And that's what, what I've been in so far to come out of, of this visit as well. Well, being around Woody and talking to him, you know that that's – if you've had the opportunity to to talk to a coach, I, I, and fortunately I have, uh, had, I think I've uh, got the first one-on-one -on -one interview with him for the IU media, but he just comes across in the same manner all the time. Very calm, very matter of fact, talking about teaching. He's always talking about the things that, and it's not like he's blowing smoke. He's not, and I don't mean to be like, this is going to sound negative to PJ Fleck, but you know, PJ Fleck is one of them, kind of off the wall bouncy kind of guys where um, he's, or he, I guess you even go to Tom Allen, who's a little, you know, a, a, little, a little over a caffeinated, but what he is just calm and to the point, direct teacher. And, and I think that that is his coaching method. Can't be that far from that. Even when he gets PO, you know, it's, it's a way that, I think he's reaching kids way better than people would have ever imagined. Probably he could be reaching kids a lot better than a, a lot of younger coaches, I think, because of his maturity, because of his knowledge, because of all those things that he can sit there and, do, and he does it in a way that you don't feel like you're getting ripped or this or that. But it's he, he's really getting across to these kids. And so that's, I just bring that up again because it's so funny. It's one of the things that people talk about so much that he would not be able to do that. I mean, I think he's doing that better than most of the dad, most of these young coaches are, my personal opinion. Yeah, and I think I think one of the biggest takeaways from talking to, to more recruits after they actually meet him in person is the relationship that they develop is a, a lot more along the lines of just a person-to-person in more of a mentor relationship than it is on the court. Um, we'll, we'll talk about him in a minute, but Ja'Kai Newton, uh, after his official visit, he he told me that the biggest thing that he talked to Mike Woodson about was future. So anything from real estate to stocks, money management. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing that not only a lot of the recruits are now starting to come around to, but even the parents see this as, okay, th this guy, this coach has my son's best interest in his heart for the next 40, 50 years. And we've heard people talk about all the time and they make a college decision. It's not just for the next four years. They, they wanna be a part of a family of uh, something that's going to be the next, you know, three, four, five decades from now. And you didn't get that a lot with with obviously the, the previous few staffs here. And I think the what you talked about, yes, the maturity obviously that Mike Woodson has, but the experience that he has and the, the way that he, has such a well-versed ability to connect with the players, connect with the parents all at the same time, and the resume that he brings to the table, um, that, that's the easiest way that, that he's able to connect with these kids. And it, it's, it goes a lot farther than just the basketball court and the X's and O's. And that's what a lot of the kids are really connecting with him on, and especially the parents up to this point. And Dylan, this is going to sound silly, but you know, if you think about kids growing up a lot of times, the younger ones, especially, who do they call? Get, who do they get real close to? Their grandfathers. And I think part of that reason is because when grandfathers were fathers, they weren't real good because there was the first time to do all that stuff. You know, you're young, you're whatever. You become a grandfather. Ah, you're what? You're you're sage, man. You got that sage wisdom. 
you're you're old and wise, older and wise and calmer. Um, I, I see Woody like that, but he doesn't seem. I can tell you this: I don't even see age when I have been around him and or talked to him. You just see a guy, and he could be forty five. 65. I don't, you don't see that when you're with him. Um, so I, I think that that age thing is laughable now. I think Dylan, he is completely destroyed and shattered that myth that, that it, it's all to pieces. And I, if he's able to continue to get the pieces that he wants, I, I'm pretty confident they're going to be fine with the coaching staff that they have because you've got Dane Fife, who is a, a, a solid recruiter. Coach Yah has done a great job. Kenya Hunter. Um, I think they're in a great position to, to continue to get the pieces they want. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of been the theme of the whole summer and, and into the fall since, since Woodson was hired, uh, is that he has really surpassed all the expectations that were put on him in terms of the recruiting trail. Obviously, we still haven't seen it on the court yet. We, we don't know. Um, but they put themselves in a position uh, to be successful this year because of what they added in the offseason. And they've already put themselves in a position to, to be successful going forward because of what they've added uh, in future recruiting classes already. And that was something that at the end of, uh, of the previous tenure just wasn't really happening on as quite as regular of a basis. And and so it's, it's definitely changed the tra trajectory of the program here as we go forward. I like uh, Xavier Booker. We talked about him. He's on his visit right now, out of Cathedral. He's a, uh, he's he's. I think he is a prototype big man for what what he's looking for. He is he's big. He can go underneath, but he likes to stay outside and shoot from the perimeter. He's athletic. He can come up the floor. He could probably he'll probably be at a point where I don't want to call. I hate to compare a high school kid to a a pro. But in style, he reminds me of a Kevin Durant from body build and that kind of stuff. I'm not saying he's Kevin Durant with, with all that, but, you know, from, from looking at him body-wise, Kevin Durant's a big a big 6'9", but he's wiry. He can bring the ball before if he wants. He can handle the ball. I see Xavier Booker, if he can, if he can get there. He looks, I mean, in that kind of mold to me. Yeah, the, the two biggest things with him is motor, and ability to, to knock down a consistent outside jumper. If he can do that, that second part, he's going to be able to obviously play a lot more around the perimeter. He has decent ball skills for obviously his height and his, his size right now. Um, but at the same time, I think he, he really needs to take a step up. He, he, he has not played a lot of high school basketball up to this point. He, he didn't play a whole lot of minutes in a, a significant role for Cathedral. So, you, you know, you look at the rankings, you look at his skill level, uh, even this summer, you know, he, he was very inconsistent in terms of he would have some really, really good games. And then, you know, at, at times he, he would really disappear. And I think that's the biggest thing that uh, is for him to take that next step is really show that motor night in and night out um, and be able to be very, very consistent with not not hitting 40 percent from three. Right. But but being able to to have kind of the the low to mid 30s, at least as of now just to show that he has that ability to hit that jumper because he, he continues to get better with those ball skills. And there's not a lot of fours that can guard him. There's definitely no fives that can guard him in high school. So he's always going to have that ability to take him off the dribble from the top of the key, which he did a lot in the summer. Still needs to add a lot more weight, obviously, if he wants to play that position in college, which I still think at this point you're going to see him play kind of that, that hybrid four where, yeah, you're going to play four round one. He's going to see a lot more time on the perimeter, but obviously to take that next step, he still needs to, like I said, get get more consistent uh, with that jump shot because I don't see him playing uh, that one person uh, on the block in college, at least as of now, just because he's, he's gotten pushed around um, multiple times in, in high school. And obviously he, he's not always going up against uh, top 40, top top 20, top 10 kids, which he's going to start doing here uh, this year and then this summer. So th those are the couple big things of watching him a few times this summer that, that I really took away. Um, and obviously the, the biggest thing, like I said, is just finding that consistency game in and game out where he can show that that ability to, to do anything that he can on the court, uh, which we know that he can, but be able to do that uh, every single night because he just hasn't showed that up to this point. 
I, I guess, Alec, I, I was going to ask that Jim mentioned that he's kind of the prototype for what Mike Woodson wants to do with his big men. Do you, do you think, I, I'm not sure if you've heard this or not, but do you think uh, in his visit that uh, Mike Woodson will probably emphasize that kind of thing? Cause, because he's done, he, we've seen him do that with other players and tell them, here's how you fit with what I want to do. Is that something you think that he'll emphasize? Yeah, absolutely. And it, I think it'll be interesting to see if he shows him film on past players that he coached, which he's done a lot with with other recruits, obviously, up to this point. And the one player that sticks out that reminds me a lot of him at this stage is Julius Randle and his time with the Knicks and obviously what Mike Woodson was able to, to kind of do with him last year when he had that breakout season um, and has obviously carried it over through, you know, one game th this <laughs> season um, with his performance in the uh, against the Celtics the other night. But um, I think what, what Julius Randle's not not a guy who's going to sit on the block. He's also not a guy who's going to sit on the perimeter and just knock down shots all day. Very similar to your book. And to to enhance his skill set the way that he was able to do and showcase all of Julius Randle's skills and ability, I think that's one thing that you kind of look at Xavier Booker and I see him more as a Julius Randle than I would Kevin Durant uh, hypothetically at this point. Um, just to do kind of the the overall makeup of their game. And the, he's never going to be as good of a shooter anywhere near as Kevin Durant and not a guy who's going to be able to to knock down that high of a percentage from three. Julius Randle is getting there, right? And and he showed that ability uh, last year. So I look at that as, as kind of if you're going to compare him to anyone, that, that would be kind of that skill set. And that's why I think Mike Woodson may be able to to really kind of pinpoint that, especially on this visit and moving forward about, hey, this is where I see you in, in my offense. Look what he did um you know with with, uh, with our roster last year in, in New York and this is how I want to bring that to Race Thompson and Trace Jackson Davis and show him some film on how they performed in the Bahamas and, and kind of do a little bit of, of all of that and I think you're going to see um something along the lines of that yeah and then uh, of course Ja'Kai Newton today expected to make his decision Indiana one of those finalists uh of the four hearing pretty good things but uh you never know until you know but uh seems to be all things are pointing uh, in a positive direction it sounds like but like again you you cannot ever assume i thought dj carton was going was was a real possibility back and man I, i'll never forget that one that and him going to iowa just really surprised me but what, what did that last four games or however long that lasted no uh, ohio state yes um and then he's he has since transferred to Marquette, I believe. But uh, Ja'Kai Newton, uh, his three o'clock today, making his decision. So everyone waiting on that. A nice shooting guard, Alec. Yeah, and he he's six four, uh, can play both on and off the ball. One of those bigger guards that uh, you really like to see in the game nowadays. Um, but but a guy who is extremely athletic. Um, can can jump out of the gym and has a, has a really good consistent jump shot that he's been working on over the summer, um, which is just getting better. Um, but he he's very difficult to stop in transition, very difficult to stop when he has a full head of steam going down the lane um, and extremely, extremely talented on the defensive end as well. Um, but the, the biggest thing with him is just how competitive he is. And I think that's one thing that he and Mike Woodson really kind of, uh, you know, bonded over was that competitive nature, but also that that nature of, hey, I'm going to do anything possible to win this play and then win this game. And you don't see that with a lot of juniors, um, with a lot of class of 2023 kids right now. Uh, a lot of them are, are more focused on doing kind of the, the highlight reel stuff, which he's able to do, but not kind of getting dirty um, and, and playing on the defensive end, which really kind of, I think sparked the the excitement that Mike Woodson had in Ja'Kai Newton because uh, the offense is going to come and and we've heard Mike Woodson talk this entire summer about wanting to focus on the defensive side of the ball first and get to the offense later. Um, he's not worried about the offensive production at this point because he, he needs to to get that defense set in order. Um, so if you have a guy who's ready and willing to to play hard on the defensive end night in and night out, that's that's something that um, is hard to come by. Uh, at this point, but uh, yeah, Indiana did everything well on that visit, uh, not only for him, um, but also the the entire family that, that was on the visit with him. So um, Indiana is definitely sitting in a good spot going into this afternoon. But like you said, you know, we'll never know until we actually uh, sit on the dot line. 
Yeah, well, then uh, we'll certainly find out here in, in a little while. But that is expected to go. What what was he? What does he bring if he were to pick IU? What would he immediately bring to this team, Alec? Yeah, like I said, someone who's going to play on both ends of the of the floor, but uh, someone who's really going to kind of take over. I think a a very strong leadership role right away. Uh, a guy who's going to come in and uh, be able to score at will. Uh, I think in the college level uh, as a freshman, um, but but really know his role and, and pick his spots well. Um, and the biggest thing, like I said, is on the defensive end of the floor. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more uh, transition opportunities here, not only this year, obviously with Mike Woodson's squad, the way that he's building that roster with bigger, longer guards, um, but that's moving into the Ja'Kai Newton aspect as well with, uh, I, mean, I think, almost a 6'10 wingspan for for a guard as well. So you look at all of his, uh, his abilities, a, a guy who may not come in and start from day one, uh, but almost kind of that similar path that Tamar Bates is going to have with this team, where even if he doesn't start, he's going to play close to 30 minutes a game uh, probably any given night and and be a huge, huge part of the, the success of Indiana moving forward. And uh, they're going to be, we, we don't know what, who will be there next year. I, Rob Fennessy was on with me at uh, Big Ten Media Days, and I asked him that very question about, coming back next year and you know it's it's undecided but i said so but there is is there a good chance that you might return because oh yeah uh so he seemed very positive about potentially coming back and, and i know and i'm not talking about this staff but and and i know in and and that's just the way of the world but in sometimes a program if they're trying to get that newness in you know you gotta run some off, is, I guess, is the nicest way to say it, and I'm not saying that that would happen. But if it doesn't, they're, they're going to be pretty guard-heavy next year. Yeah, so New Newton would be for the year after, though. So you're going to have – obviously, you're going to be guard-heavy regardless next year with T.J. Gunn coming in, Hood Chafino coming in. Um, but it's that, that year after where it kind of gets tricky, right? You don't know if Christian Lander's still going to be there. You're still going to have Anthony Leal, Trey Galloway. Uh, you don't really know what's going to happen with Tamar Bates as well, how long he's going to stay. Huchifino, who knows? I mean, you have a lot of guys who are kind of in that potential one and done phase um, with with Huchifino and, and Tamar Bates potentially, um, but they could also be there for two or three years, just depending on how everything goes. So I think, like, like we said, the biggest thing with with Mike Woodson is getting a lot of really talented guards who can play both on and off the ball, and then having one true playmaker on the floor with him. Um, and I think that's what you're you're starting to see with this roster, kind of how they're they're taking fold now. Um, but moving into the next two years, you have a lot of really really good combo guards and a lot of guys who can make plays off of the dribble. Which I, I don't know the last time you could look at an Indiana roster and say you have three to four guards who can take anyone off the dribble and, and be pretty confident that they're going to beat them off the dribble. With these next four to five guys coming in. I think everyone feels pretty confident that even if they're going up against the senior, um, their skill and, and IQ is a lot higher and a lot better than maybe the past uh, 10 to 15 groups of guards that I've had.